Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said, an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. When the Most High began to tear down strongholds, you should expect attacks from everywhere. Israelites, that is why it's important for you to know how to recognize a spiritual attack and how to respond accordingly. Most Israelites fight back in the flesh. Some Israelites don't even consider the dark powers of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places and unclean spirits behind the scenes causing the problems. When you attack flesh, you automatically lose the battle. You're supposed to attack the spirit influencing the person under demonic influence, as well as the powers behind the unclean spirits. If you attack the person being manipulated by unclean spirits, you're not attacking the root. In order to triumph and over the principalities and the dark powers of this world, you have to destroy the root. You must shift your focus to the spirit. Israelites, the time has come for you to understand that we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. A lot of the division and confusion in our communities would cease if Israelites learned to fight in the spirit. Slandering a person and attacking a person's character is not going to cause a devil to flee, nor will it solve the problem. Some Israelites believe other people are the cause to the division and confusion among us. Confusion and division are spirits. It's the unclean spirits that cause the misunderstanding, division, and the hate in our community. When you attack the person, you're not doing the will of the Most High. As a holy people, you're supposed to conduct yourself in a manner that represents the Most High. When you attack your brothers and sisters, you're doing the will of the Satans. It's the dark powers of this world that is influencing you to attack your own. Most people are under heavy demonic influence and they don't know. We're living in a time where lawlessness has increased. People are not ashamed of what they do. They put it out there for all to see. Israelites, it's the unclean spirits influencing the people to behave in a way that transgress the laws of the Most High. Israelites, it's very important to the Satans to get the people of the Most High to transgress his laws. The reason the Satans encourage you to sin, your sins give the Satans access to you. Also, sin separates you from the Most High. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Without the protection of the Most High, the Satans in the entire kingdom of darkness gain access to you. Israelites, that is why you see lawlessness is promoted in the beast culture as well as the beast religion. The disciples of Satan are teaching that the laws are done away with. This doctrine promotes lawlessness. Before the Most High sent the flood, the children of Cain were known as the sinners. Cain's descendants were heavily influenced by Satan and the children of the fallen. Most people don't know that it was Satan that influenced Cain to kill Abel. The Bible won't go into great details about what caused Cain to murder his brother. The other books will give you the background information that the Bible left out. As to Cain, he was so sullen and so angry that he went into the field where Satan came to him and said to him, Since thy brother Abel has taken refuge with thy father Adam, 
because thou didst trust him from the altar. They have kissed his face, and they rejoice over him far more than over thee. When Cain heard these words of Satan, he was filled with rage, and he let no one know, but he was laying wait to kill his brother until he brought him into the cave. With Cain being under the influence of the spirit of anger, gave Satan the opportunity to influence him to kill his own brother. Cain is not innocent. He lacks self-control. However, Satan increased the spirit of hatred and jealousy that had a stronghold on him, which caused Cain to sin against the Most High by murdering his brother. Majority of the lawlessness you see in the world are influenced by demons and unclean spirits. The spirit of the children of the fallen are causing chaos everywhere. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. As you can see, Israelites, the kingdom of darkness is the power behind lawlessness in the beast system. Our ancestors' iniquity was at an all-time high in the beginning, that the Most High decided to send the flood to cleanse the earth. The Most High used eight people to repopulate the earth. The flood that destroyed all of Cain's descendants was not a surprise to our fathers who were anointed to lead our people in the beginning. Adam taught Seth and Seth taught his children. That is how our ancestors were aware of what is to come. Enoch gave his children the books he wrote. Enoch instructed his children to distribute his writings to their children and throughout the generations. Now, my son Methuselah, all these things I speak unto thee and write for thee. To thee I have revealed all and have given thee books of everything. Preserve, my son Methuselah, the books written by thy father, that thou mayest transmit them to future generations. With me unmasking the God of this world with truth, as well as exposing the alterations in the scriptures, is not an attack against the people. I'm not attacking the people when I expose the Satans in their deceptions. Most people believe because I expose Jesus, the God of this world, and putting a spotlight on the false Messiah, to some people that is a personal attack against them and their God. With me countering the Satan's deceptions with truth is a response to the deception done by the kingdom of darkness. This is spiritual warfare. We live on a battlefield. Spiritual warfare targets the invisible enemies many of you neglect. The invisible enemies the eyes of the flesh cannot see. A lot of you don't consider the invisible enemies that are the root cause to all of your problems. Israelites, it's important for you to correctly identify your enemies. You have visible and invisible enemies. If you believe attacking the people you see will resolve your problems, the spirit of confusion, division, and hate would not have any place in our communities. The invisible enemy is your biggest threat, not your neighbors or open diary from the internet. The scripture said you should focus on the unseen. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Israelites, the time has come for you to mature spiritually. With the scriptures saying you should focus on the unseen, as well as the scriptures letting us know that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, you should direct your attention to the invisible enemies causing chaos behind the scenes. Israelites, refrain from attacking your own people. You have been doing this for years. It hasn't resolved none of the issues in our communities, but give room to the Satans to place a stronger hold on our people. Stop doing the will of Satan and learn how to pray for your people. Many of you mistakenly put the anointed teachers, the most high rays in this generation, with wicked people. You must learn how to differentiate. When Peter said to our ancestors, you rejected the prince of life and chose a murderer to be released to you. The scripture said his words, Cut them in their heart. Israelites, this is how the Spirit of the Most High convict his people of wrongdoing. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, 
men and brethren, what shall we do? The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, or to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Israelites, did you hear in the scriptures you just heard of Peter calling the Messiah a prince and a savior? Another name for the angels are prince or sons of God. Peter said the offering our prince did by being hanged on a tree symbolizes repentance for Israel and to find forgiveness of sins. Once again, you will see the scriptures doesn't align with the doctrines the workers of iniquity have been circulating for multiple generations to our people. Verse 31 in chapter 5 said, Repentance and forgiveness of sins. Nowhere does the word of the Most High say the Messiah took your sins away and the sins of the world. Israelites, it's important for you to read the scriptures for yourself and compare the word of the Most High to the doctrines from Rome, as well as to any doctrine you have heard. The word of the Most High is the truth and the standard, not the doctrines from Rome. It's the truth that sanctify you by the word of the Most High. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Doctrines don't sanctify you. Doctrines are a form of mind control. Only the words the Most High have spoken are alive and powerful enough to sanctify his people. The words of the Most High will not return to him void, but will do what he sent them to do. Anyone can misinterpret the scriptures to form their own beliefs. A lot of people mistake the deep truth revealed on this channel for doctrine. I don't follow religion, therefore I don't share doctrine with you, but truth only. I also want to point out that Peter said the Messiah was hung on a tree. Jesus, the God of this world, was crucified on a cross. Many use the cross as a symbol that represents what the God of this world did for the sins of the world. Peter clearly said in the scriptures it was a sign of repentance for the Israelites and to find forgiveness of sins. The disciples of the God Messiah said his sacrifice was for the whole world. What Peter said correspond with the Messiah saying he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The scriptures say one thing, and the doctrines from Rome say another. Israelites, don't force the scriptures to say what you want, nor to confirm the doctrines from Rome. The scriptures doesn't support the doctrines from Rome, but exposes them. Peter also said, the God of our fathers raised up the Messiah whom our ancestors hung on a tree. Peter is one of the disciples and a witness to the Messiah. Peter differentiate the Messiah from the God of our fathers. Listen again for yourself. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. You heard the scriptures word for word for yourself. I didn't add anything nor took anything away from what was written. Peter said the God of our fathers raised the Messiah. If the Messiah is the father in the flesh, why must he raise himself up? Why couldn't the Messiah tell the people that he is the most high, the father in the flesh? That is because he is not. The scripture said no one can see the father and live. According to the doctrines from Rome, God himself walked the earth as a man. Everyone who saw him did not perish. The doctrine of the Messiah being the most high in the flesh contradict what is written in the book of Exodus that said no one can see the Father and live. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. There are countless Israelites in and out of the awakening that believe the doctrine from Rome that said the Messiah is the most high the Father in the flesh. Israelites, let us go back to the very beginning, to the moments after Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. The scripture said Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Most High, and the scripture said the presence of the Most High was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. The scripture said Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Most High. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. 
And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. The Most High didn't need to manifest himself in the flesh to confront Adam and Eve. When the presence of the Most High walked in the garden and Adam and Eve heard his voice, but they saw no similitude of the Most High, they recognized his voice because everyone who belongs to the Father knows his voice. They only heard his voice and was aware of the Most High's presence, which would support what is written in the book of Exodus of no one can see the Father and live. The Most High, the Father, doesn't need to come in the flesh to interact with us. Like I said to you before, the Most High doesn't operate in the flesh. The Most High does nothing in the flesh. Israelites, it's the kingdom of darkness that operates in the flesh. The flesh is the Satan's territory. The lust of the flesh is not from the Most High, but from this world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. What Jesus proclaiming to be God in the flesh reveals who he truly is. The scriptures say we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. The scriptures say we cannot please the Most High in the flesh. There is a conflict between flesh and spirit. Despite of all of this written in the scriptures, the Satans convinced many people that the creator, the father, became flesh to fight against the kingdom of darkness. When we fight in the flesh, we lose. We must engage in spiritual warfare to pull down strongholds. The scripture said, although we walk in the flesh because we are part flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. The weapons of our warfare is not carnal. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The Most High doesn't encourage us to fight in the flesh throughout the scriptures. Why would the Most High, the Creator, fight in the flesh against the kingdom of darkness? You can read throughout the scriptures of the Most High sending his army to fight against the enemies of our ancestors. The Father never had to become flesh to fight. He can fight for us while sitting on his throne. The purpose of the Messiah coming in the flesh was to overcome the power of death that had a stronghold over us, as well as to find forgiveness of sins. The Most High sent the Messiah to do his will. Throughout the Israelite journey, the Most High would send his angels to fight for his people. The Father himself don't need to come in the flesh to fight for us. That is why he has a great army that no one can stand against. Your Prince Michael is the commander in chief to that army. Every time our people had to fight, your Prince was there. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, Am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Israelites, the scriptures only becomes controversial when you insert the doctrines from religion into the sacred text. Once you remove the indoctrination and read the scriptures with the Holy Spirit, you will find the truth. If it's meant for you to know the mysteries, the word of the Most High will reveal itself. The word of the Most High doesn't contradict itself. When an alteration occur in the scriptures and false prophets misinterpret the scriptures, the doctrines of devils cause the contradictions within the scriptures. Israelites, I recommend that when reading the scriptures, you purge all of the doctrines you have been taught by religion out of your mind. Allow the Holy Spirit to decode the sealed scriptures to you. That is the only way you'll be able to find the truth of the Most High's words in the Bible. Whatever the Holy Spirit revealed to you, the Most High will have his anointed teachers in this generation give you confirmation within their messages. The Most High has poured out a deep sleep upon his people and closed the eyes of the prophets. The only way to find the truth, you must seek the Most High and the Most High will reveal the mysteries to you. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. 
and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. Israelites, the Father is spirit, and he can be everywhere at the same time. The scriptures in the book of Genesis said that the Most High's presence walked in the cool of the day to speak with Adam. This confirmed the Most High doesn't need to come in the flesh to do his will. Our people have been interacting with the Father long before the Messiah became flesh. That is why you have to question the doctrine of Jesus saying, no one can come to the Father but through him only. You and I can pray to the Father and speak with the Father at any time. The Messiah will intercede and mediate between the Most High and us. That is one of the role of the Messiah. Israelites, you can always approach the Father and speak with him. Your prayers will be heard as long as sin is not found in you. Sin is the only thing that separates you from the Most High. Once true repentance takes place, you will find forgiveness of sin. You can approach the Father with anything and he will hear you. The Messiah will mediate between you and the Most High. The scripture said, draw near to the Most High and he will draw near to you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. The scriptures encourage us to draw near to the Most High, the Father, and he will draw near to you. There are countless people who had divine encounters and did not know who the Messiah was, nor did they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Matter of fact, some of you have had divine encounters and you didn't know the real Messiah until recently. Israelites, the Most High is your God, not the Messiah. The Messiah is the one the Most High will use to deliver you. Just like the Most High used the angel of the Lord to deliver his people out of Mizraim. With me saying to you, you can go directly to the Father is not discrediting the Messiah. The scripture said to go boldly into the throne room of the Most High. One of the many roles of the Messiah is to mediate and intercede on our behalf. The scriptures in the Bible name Jesus, the God of this world, as the mediator between the Most High and his people. Dan, the son of Jacob, referred to the mediator and intercessor as an angel. This angel would stand up against the kings of the earth. The book of Daniel said that angel is Michael. The book of Enoch confirms what Dan, the son of Jacob, said to his children about the angel that is the mediator and intercessor for us. The Most High called the holy angel Michael his intercessor. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And now fear the Lord, my children, and beware of Satan and his spirits. Draw near unto God and unto the angel that interceded for you. For he is a mediator between God and men. And for the peace of Israel, he shall stand up against the kingdom of the enemy. And I will give thee, Enoch, my intercessor, the archistratage, Michael, for the handwritings of thy fathers, Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, and Jared, thy father. If you have seen the message about unmasking the Messiah with truth, you will know the word archistratage means chief commander or supreme ruler. The Bible said Jesus, the God of this world, is the intercessor and mediator between God and men. Everyone believed Jesus and black Jesus is the Messiah sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. When the Holy Spirit guides you into all truth, you will discover that the real Messiah is an angel. The Most High in the book of Enoch called the holy angel Michael his intercessor. You heard it for yourself. I didn't add anything to what was written in the scriptures. The Most High is only tearing down the strongholds. Israelites, if our ways please the Most High, the Messiah will see to it that your requests are heard and granted. The Messiah, as well as other angels, take our prayers to the Most High, which corresponds with the Messiah's role of making intercessions for the righteous. The four angels that stand in the presence of the Most High are constantly praying for the righteous and rebuking the Satans that come to accuse us before the Most High. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost, 
that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels, which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. And I heard the fourth voice fending off the Satans and forbidding them to come before the Lord of Spirits to accuse them who dwell on the earth. Israelites, you can always approach the Father and speak with him. What God do you know that doesn't interact with his people? We are living in a generation where we must serve and worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. We are the generation that operates with the Holy Spirit. The Comforter, the Messiah, prayed to the Father to leave behind for us. This is why it's important for you to know the voice of the Most High and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth. Albeit when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Israelites, have you noticed when it comes to freedom, it's the truth that makes you free. The word of the Most High sanctify you with truth, and the Holy Spirit guide you into all truth. As you can see, Israelites, doctrines don't make you free, but the truth is what makes you free. That is why I am unmasking Jesus with truth. That is the only way you will become free from spiritual bondage. When the Messiah asked his disciples in the scriptures, who do the people say the son of man was? The people in that generation thought the Messiah was John the Baptist, while some say he was Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. When the Most High the Father doesn't give you the ability to understand his words, you will never understand them. The scripture said it wasn't given for all people to know the mysteries. The generation alive during the time the Messiah became flesh thought he was one of the prophets. None of them thought he was God in the flesh. After the Messiah asked his disciples who the people say that he was, the Messiah asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? Peter, one of the disciples, answered and said he was the son of God. Peter didn't say he was the most high, the father in the flesh, but the son to the living God. The generation alive at the time believed the Messiah was a prophet and his disciples believed he was the promised deliverer. Not one of them said he was God in the flesh. After Peter responded, the Messiah blessed Peter and said, Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but the Most High, the Father in heaven, revealed this truth to you. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Israelites, there are some truths that will be revealed to you by the Most High. Flesh and blood will not know these things. The truth was made known to you by the Most High, the Father, through his Spirit, not by men or prophets using familiar spirits to indoctrinate you. Peter knew the Messiah was the son of the living God because the Most High revealed it to him. Just like I have revealed to you the true identity of the real Messiah. Flesh and blood did not reveal it to me, but the Most High the Father did via his spirit, which I've shared this information with you on multiple occasions. Israelites, this is what walking in the spirit is, knowing when the Most High is communicating with you through his spirit. The Most High will reveal deep truth that will overwhelm the wisdom of this world. The Most High will use the people the world have rejected, discredited, and underestimate to shame the so-called wise. Just like in the awakening, there are doctrines proclaiming the Most High don't deal with women. The Most High will show himself strong through whomever he wants. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. And hast revealed them unto babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. As the Most High unmasked the God of this world with truth, 
a lot of people will become free. There is a scripture in the Bible that give the hierarchy the most high set for the family. The scripture said the most high the father is over the Messiah. The Messiah is the head of the men. The man is the head of the woman. If the Messiah is the most high in the flesh, who is the God that is head over him? This verse further proves the Messiah is not the most high the father in the flesh. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. If the Messiah is God in the flesh, how come the scriptures keep differentiating the Messiah from the Father? Israelites, the workers of iniquity and religion indoctrinate the people to accept their narratives. Due to the indoctrination of our people, when they read the scriptures, in the back of their mind, they believe Jesus is God, despite the scriptures never saying Jesus is God. They will view the Messiah as God in the flesh. The indoctrination of our people in religion is rooted in witchcraft. Israelites, this is why you cannot separate idolatry from witchcraft. They go hand in hand. It's through sorcery one can control a person spiritually. The scripture said the Most High, the Father, is over the Messiah. If the Messiah is God in the flesh, why must the scripture say the Most High is the head over him? Anyone who truly read the scriptures for themselves will see that the scriptures don't confirm the God in the flesh doctrine. The workers of iniquity misinterpret the scriptures and the sheep that are deceived by their doctrines repeat what was taught to them. We have to stop trying to make the scriptures say what it doesn't. Some people have used the verse that say the Messiah and the Father are one to prove Jesus is God in the flesh. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. I inserted the verse before the scripture that said, I and my Father are one, to give you the proper context of what the Messiah meant. In the verse prior, the Messiah said the Father is greater than everyone. Yet people look past that verse and use the following verse to say Jesus is God because Jesus said the Father and him are one. Israelites, the scriptures don't support the doctrines from Rome. When Peter spoke to our ancestors in the book of Acts of how they have rejected the Messiah, the scripture said Peter's words cut the hearts of our ancestors. The word of the Most High is supposed to prick your heart to bring forth the change needed to save your life. Some Israelites mistake the conviction received from hearing the truth as offense by the person delivering the message. Remember, the word of the Most High is sharper than a two-edged sword. If you're seeking the Most High with all of your heart, you should know how he operates. We must make progress in our spiritual journey by maturing. Israelites, you should view the unmasking of Jesus as a form of deliverance from spiritual bondage. Religion has a stronghold on the people. Religion made the people believe they are spiritually free while in bondage. Israelites, it's the truth that shall make you free, not religious fairy tales rooted in witchcraft. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Not only does the truth make you free, the scriptures went on to say through knowledge will the just be delivered. The scriptures didn't say you would be delivered by religious doctrines, but by the truth and knowledge. Religion made sure that you don't increase your knowledge by discrediting books that can help increase your wisdom and understanding. The workers of iniquity influence you to dismiss certain scriptures in the Bible. Israelites, with the Most High exposing everything that was done in darkness and revealing the secrets that were hidden, the exposure of your enemies should bring joy, not anger. When you respond with unbelief and anger, you're compromising yourself. The scripture said, whoever is slow to anger has great understanding. The people who is angry only exalt evil. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. All of the secrets the Most High is making known in the awakening is a counterattack against the Satans and the spiritual wickedness in high places. This truth is not a personal attack against anyone. The Satans put the deception out there and the Most High is using whomever he choose to counter the deception with truth. I fight against the spiritual wickedness in high places, as well as the dark powers that run this world. It's the Satans that deceive our people, as well as use the workers of iniquity to misinterpret the scriptures. 
The Most High exposing the secrets is how the Father is destroying the strongholds that kept his people bound for multiple generations. Israelites, the time has come for us to stop worshiping the works of man's hands. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down all thy strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands. Unmasking Jesus with truth is meant to set the people free from religious strongholds. Most of you know that the Satans deceived the whole world, but majority of you don't know how the Satans accomplished this. The doctrines taught to you in religion were designed to keep you in sin. When the people of the Most High rebel against the laws, the presence, and the protection of the Most High departs from them. The great sin of idolatry is promoted in religion. Idolatry will separate our God from us. The time has come for you to understand this truth. The Most High will not share his glory with anyone. Israelites, you must understand the Most High will not share his glory with anyone. That is including the Messiah. The laws of the Most High are very clear. There shouldn't be no other gods before the Most High. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. With the truth the Most High is revealing, a lot of Israelites are re-evaluating everything they have heard and learned in the beast religion. Due to the dismantling of the God of this world, many people are starting to realize that everything taught to them was lies. The Israelites that are trapped in the house of bondage identify with Jesus, the God of this world. To them, Jesus is everything, while the Israelites in the awakening identity is found in Yahshua. Now that the Most High is unmasking Jesus with truth and revealing the identity of the real Messiah, the truth is cutting the Israelites' hearts just like the truth Peter spoke to our ancestors pricked their hearts. Instead of repenting and seeking the Most High for confirmation, some Israelites attack the messenger. They respond just like their enemies have taught them, start a smear campaign to silence the truth. Satan have taught some of you very well. The prince of this world is the God many Israelites have accepted and worship. That is how everyone whose name is not written in the book will serve the beast, fulfilling the scriptures. With secrets this deep, it's going to take time for the people to accept that they have been deceived. Some of our people mask the fact that they have been deceived behind unbelief. Israelites, unbelief is dangerous. Remember, the Most High will reject you and your children for rejecting knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Israelites, in order to be transformed, you have to let the Most High renew your mind. The Satans, through the workers of iniquity, purposely inserted misinformation in the scriptures to get you to worship and serve other gods. When the people worship idols as God, they transgress the laws of the Most High. When you transgress the laws, it causes separation between you and the Most High. Israelites, it's important for you to seek the Most High with all of your heart. That is the only way you will find him. Religion is the path the Satan's created to separate you from the Most High. You won't find the Most High in religion. The doctrines taught to you by the beast religion is not from the Holy Spirit who knows the deep things of the Most High. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Israelites, let the scriptures speak for itself. Don't let the doctrines of devils from Rome give the spirit of confusion a stronghold over your life. The scripture said only the Spirit of the Most High knows the truth. Allow the Holy Spirit to make the words of the Most High become alive before your eyes. The Most High through the Holy Spirit should be our teacher. Don't let the disciples of Satan through religion teach the scriptures. 
They don't know the scriptures and they certainly don't teach truth. Their father is the father of lies. If you follow the teachings from the high level workers of iniquity and religion, the prince of this world is your God and Messiah. The Most High is unmasking the prince of this world with truth to deliver you. Israelites, don't reject the Most High at this time. Listen to the Messiah when he said, if you have an ear to hear, let them hear. Israelites, the Most High is pouring out his spirit. It was prophesied. Make sure you're living a life that will allow the spirit of the Most High to find a place in you. Remember, you're the temple, the house, the spirit of the Most High. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light.